Well, Mr. and Mrs. Ace have moved into an apartment, having given up their bungalow when Mr. Ace lost his money. Their friend Marge still lives with them, and also Jane's 18-year-old niece, Betty, who has come to town and already found herself a job. Mr. Ace, however, is still looking for work. This episode takes place early in the afternoon at the apartment. Mr. Ace has just come in. Listen. Yeah. Hello. Well, why are you home so early? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. It's only half past one. I know, Jane. It's just that I've done all I can today. I've been talking about jobs everywhere I could, and I left this new phone number after I called you to find out what it was. Uh, did anybody call after I phoned you? Not a call. The man put the phone in about 10 o'clock this morning, and not one person called. President company accepted there. Oh, thank you, dear. You're welcome, dear. Mm. I wonder if he put the phone in right. Oh, he must have. They know their business. Oh, I don't know. He kept asking me if we wanted the French phone. And I kept telling him nobody here understood. Nobody understood it. I must have told him a dozen times if I'm a day. The way he kept insisting on it. Uh, yes, yes. Would you mind? Let's not make an issue of it. Say something? Let's not start anything about the telephone. Let's just hope it rings sometime this afternoon. All right. I just want to sit around anyhow and take it easy. I haven't been feeling any too good lately. You haven't? What's the matter? Oh, I don't know. I, I wondered myself. In fact, I dropped in at Doc Goldie's office this morning. You did? I didn't know you felt that bad. Well, I wanted to make sure there was nothing critically wrong. Well, what did he say? Well, he said, uh, well, he hit the nail right on the head. He did? Did it hurt? Did what hurt? He said he hit your nose. Ah, uh, yes, that was my fault. I meant what he told me was certainly right. He said I'd been working too hard lately. Working too hard? Yes, that's funny, isn't it? When I told him I hadn't been working at all for a couple of weeks, he uh, looked a little startled, and he changed it to I'd been worrying too much lately. Well, that's more like it. I think you have to, dear. No. Yes, I do. Well, I could have saved five dollars for coming to see you instead of the doctor, couldn't I? Now, see, you're worrying again about the five dollars. That's what I mean. <laughs> All right, Jane, I, I won't worry. I'm just going to sit right here and try to take it easy. Yes, now just sit right there and relax there. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to turn out all right. Now, you just wait in here. Wait in here? Yes, for the phone to ring. Oh, I... Well, that's all I can do at the moment. That's right. Now, just get back. Somebody will call up. Don't worry. I hope so. I do, too. Well, it's nice and comfortable in here today, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Jane, I'm, I'm afraid we won't be able to hear the phone ring if you keep on jabbering away like this. Oh, well, um, I guess we'll just be quiet, huh? Mm, that's a good guess. Uh, dear, um, would you like to take a shower? A shower? Yes, I always find the phone rings most when I'm taking a bath. Hmm, I see. Well, how about it, Jack? Uh, no, not now, Jane. I'm quite comfortable now. That's nice. Uh, it is pretty cozy in here, that. I guess this is a pretty nice choice in an apartment you made at that. Oh, yes, I'm getting used to it now. I mean, as long as we did have to give up our home. Well, this is our home. Yeah, well, at least it'll have to serve as our home for the time being. It's just too bad that... This all had to happen at this late stage of the game. Just as we were doing so well, the beginning to... Now, see... don't talk like that, Bill. Oh. What's the matter with this place? You said yourself just now, it's so cozy here. You look very comfortable there. Isn't it nice to have some place to come and stretch out before a fireplace with a dog at your feet and a pipe? Yes, only there's no fireplace and no dog. Hey, shall I get your pipe? No, I don't feel like smoking just now. Oh, uh, would you feel better if we got a dog? A do no, Jane, will you forget about it? Well, I want you to feel comfortable here, dear. I do. I'm not worrying about myself anyhow. I'm just sorry all this had to happen to you. Me? I don't care if we have a dog or not. I'm not talking about a dog. That would be a fine thing, a dog, another mouth to feed. Now, dear, that has all the earmuffs of a dirty dig. Do you mean Betty again? 
Well, I'm sort of resigned to her now. Well, she's working with you, see. Yes. And she's going to pay us something every week for living with her. Yes, I know. I'm not worrying about that part of it. I'm worrying about finding some fellows for her. Oh, don't bother yourself with that now, Jane. Well, you read that letter my sister wrote me. She said she couldn't get Betty interested in any boys back home if she wants me to do something about it. But why take on any added responsibility? Well, I don't mind paying Cupid for my own niece, dear. I like to do it. All oh, right, Cupid, if you enjoy it. Well, I would enjoy it if she would only let me invite some boys over sometimes. But she's so obstinate, she just won't listen. She keeps saying they're such a bore. How does she know she's oh, never she's seen she's so set in her ideas. For a young kid, she has some pretty serious thoughts, worrying about the conditions of the world. Yes, and... isn't it, Jane? Yes. If she only takes off those glasses she wears, or only wear them when she reads, maybe. She's really pretty, don't you think, Mary? Yes, I guess so. She looks just like my sister. When my sister was very day, she was as pretty as a picture. As a picture, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I guess it'll turn out all right. Mm, I hope so. She'll probably meet people where she's working and they'll invite No, you know. that's just it. I thought maybe she'd meet the boss's son, you know, like they do in the movies. The boss's son? Yes, but she had to take a job where the boss is a bachelor. Oh. Of all places. Mm, it's disgusting, isn't it? Yes, I think it's... Just... Oh, sarcastic, huh? Well, I, I think it's pretty lucky she got a job at all. Very lucky to run into somebody that happened to need a secretary and getting herself $25 a week, yes, you know. Yes, but if she could have got some rich man with a good-looking son, and he'd come to the office someday in his open roadster and see Betty there and offer to take her home from work in the rain. In an open roadster? Well, or a taxi, even. Oh, you'll settle for a taxi. Right, then. Mm. And then he'd want to know when he could meet her again, and they'd begin seeing each other all the time, and before you'd know it, he'd ask her to marry him. And, and his father would cut him off without a cent? Yes, and he'd... No, he wouldn't. If anything, the father would come to Betty and offer her a lot of money if she would leave his son alone. And she tears up the check, and the father sees it's no use, so they live happily ever after. Shall we uh, stay for the newsreel? What? What kind of a movie is that you thought of? Of course, I know I'm counting my keys. Uh, before they're had, son. Yes, yeah. but it would be nice if they... Oh, there's the phone now. Oh, uh, wait a minute now, dear. You just sit there and I'll answer uh, But, Jane, it might be one of those calls I'm expecting. Well, I'll tell you if it is. Hello? A uh, what? No, you've got the wrong number. Goodbye, then. Well, that's irony for you. First call, and it's the wrong number. Oh, yes. Well, don't worry. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, Betty and the boss. Is... Oh, what I just did. What? That phone call. What about it? He said, is this E4055? And I said, wrong number. 405? Why, that's this number. I know. I'm just so used to our old number. Oh, isn't that all? Well, I told you to let me answer it. I know, dear. I don't know what I'm thinking oh, about. Oh, you're sitting around dreaming about Betty and her boyfriend. Now, would you please let me answer the phone from now on? That might have been one of the jobs that I left my number at. Well, they'll call back, won't they? I hope so. Only the way things are now, I don't want to take a chance of losing out on anything. So from now on, will well, you... there it is, dear. Speak of the devil. I'll answer it. Maybe my luck's changing. Maybe I'm going to get a... Hello? Yes? Isn't he? Yes, isn't Mr. A? Oh. Uh, yes, Mr. Stevens. I, I know it is. Uh, well, uh, I'll be in tomorrow and make the payment. Oh, yes, without fail. Uh, thanks for calling. Goodbye. What is it, dear? Oh, it's an insurance payment that's due. I've been so mixed up lately, I let it slip by with it. Miss Wilson used to remind me of it at the office. I have to hop over there tomorrow and pay it. Um, dear. Yes? I've got about $400 in the bank. No, now. Jane, thanks. But I mean, if you need some I've money... I've got a few dollars left, enough to meet expenses mm-hmm. for the next few weeks anyhow. I'm not that destitute. Yes. Just that my insurance comes due at this time. That's what makes it kind of difficult. Yes, it never rains in my pores. But I don't think you want some money, dear. I'll be I glad don't need to... any, Jane. Came out of the whole thing with about six hundred dollars. Of course, this insurance takes quite a chunk out of that, but oh, I'm sure something will be turning up before long. Oh, sure it will. Oh, I hope so. Only it just looks pretty black right this minute. Well, it always does, dear. That's a sure sign something good's going to happen. Don't you know that when things look very black, nine times ten something good happens? 
Nine times ten, eh? Sure. Now, just sit back. Oh, there's don't... another call. No, no, I'll get it, Jane. All right. I don't think there's any other bill collector that would be... Co- Hello? Yes? Speaking. Who? Yeah, yes, I'll, I'll hold on. Well, Neil Williams calling. No, well, Mark isn't here. You ought to know Mark isn't here at this time of day. He's calling for me. Oh, for you. Well, what is Hello? You? Yes, Neil. How are Well, I just happened to be here. I just walked in a little while and... What? Marge told you all about it, huh? Yes, I've been having a little trouble. Fi- no, I'm not proud. Anything at all. Or, what could I do on a newspaper? I'm not a writer. Or... Oh. Oh, I see. Yes. What is it, dear? Well, that sounds like something. Sure, I'm interested, but what kind of a job would it be? I mean, I... sure, we'll be home all evening. Yes. Thanks so much, Neil. I, I... Thanks. Eight o'clock, fine. So long. Thank you, dear. He says he can get me a job on the post. On the post? Why, you can't write. I told him that. He said I didn't have to. It would be something I can do. He said he would come out tonight and tell me all about it. See, what did I just tell you? I told yeah, you something. Yeah, but I wonder what it could be. I don't know, dear. Oh, I hope it's something I can do. Well, all we can do now is wait for Neil and Prey. I'm sure that he... Oh, son, did you hear that little joke I made up? Neil and Prey? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it seems like old times. See you laughing. And so Jane and Mr. Race wait for Neil and pray. Their prayers are answered with the proposition Neil has, as we learn when next we meet the easy aces.